I mean, they can't into substance, but just to educate. But is that what you're saying should be reconsidered? Okay. All right. All right. I am not going to go back. I mean, this case has been going on for how long? Six months, at least the trial part of it. And obviously, I'm parachuting. Overly dedicated, even on vacation. I got a theory y'all might like. Some of y'all ain't, but of course, let's get into it. Statements under the co-conspirator rule. Is there a pending motion or was there an oral motion? Has there been a... <clears throat> and with regard to the question of the admissibility of Copeland's statements under the co-conspirator rule. Is there a pending motion or was there an oral motion? Has there been a ruling? There was a ruling. Um, okay. I don't, I don't recall if it's been reduced to writing. I'm going to assume it was, um, but you know, we, we've, we've, we've litigated a recusal motion. We've, we've talked about the appearance of impropriety at this point, and, and, and from our stance, we need to relitigate it to substance, but just to educate. But is that what you're saying should be reconsidered? Okay. All right. All right. I am not going to go back. I mean, this case has been going on for... <laughs> How long? Six months, at least the trial part of it. And obviously I'm parachuting in and I'm just going to have to pick up from here and move forward. I cannot go back and reconsider every evidentiary ruling that's already been made. And I don't think that's what you're asking. I think you're saying because this witness is still on the stand. Um, but I don't know, Mr. Botts, if you were about to say, let's reconsider everything, but we're not going to be able to do that. Just all the rulings on, on Mr. Copeland. Okay. All right. I will not heard from Miss for Mr. Um, I will y'all in a couple of weeks. I'll know all of this, but I just honestly have not been following this case up until now. And we may not start August 5th with the jury. We may have so much left to do still that we give them another week. But once we do start back with the jury, I'm thinking 845 to 6. And when I say 845, I mean 845. I intend to take the bench at 845. I expect all of, I know that the uh, parties, the, the defendants will be here because the sheriff's office will have them here. I want all the attorneys to be here as well. And if you have five attorneys on your side, as long as one of them's here, we're going forward. So, okay. So I don't want to be waiting around till 930 to get started. 845. Um, to say about that. Um, apparently, one of the first things that I don't know how many different deputies told me was the um, clothing for the clients has gotten a little out of hand in terms of how much they all have now. That So, yeah, I don't know, but um, Y'all need to maybe get together and let's exchange most of that. And sure, they can have new outfits for court, but I, it sounds like there are like full wardrobes full of clothing for some of these defendants. And that's just a lot for the deputies to have to keep up with. So how about if y'all check in and maybe through Miss Rosser, y'all all know Miss Rosser, I think she's not even here today. Yes, yeah, she is over there. Miss Rosser, my fabulous litigation manager. Um, and let's make sure that it gets whittled down to a manageable amount of clothing. You know, like there are only going to be five days in each week. <laughs> So even if they had a different outfit every day, that would only be five outfits, okay? We shouldn't have 20 different outfits for anybody. So y'all need to clear out, apparently, the closet. So now I've done that for the deputies. They'll be more happy. Um, I, we'll just leave it at that for now. Um, there was... Um, an issue about apparently, and I'm not even sure if I understand exactly what has gone on with this, but the um, defendants 
listening through ear pods to things on laptops while court is going on. Um, and I'm not sure I understand why that's happening. And that raises some security issues with our security staff with the sheriff's office. So can somebody kind of explain to me what that's about and why that's necessary? And if nobody wants to, then we'll just do away with it. I think it was originally on that board. All right. Well, we won't be bored from here on out. So then if that's the only reason for it, um, I want to be moving forward uh, efficiently and expeditiously. So let's just plan to not have that happen anymore. And if there arises some new reason for it, then we can address it again anew. Okay. Sure. Yes, sir. Uh, there are times where uh, the court might need to listen to evidence, interviews, things of that nature, um, and I've made that available for my clients to listen to some of the interviews from uh, witnesses, testimony, uh, prior interviews, things of that nature. For evidentiary purposes, that would be a request for my client to be able to have that access where necessary. So why is that happening in court? That seems like something that should happen after hours between the two of you. I don't understand that. Just maximizing the time that I have with my clients to see since uh, I don't have availability with them outside of court every day. So he's here, we're here. So a lot of times I'll give them an opportunity to review evidence and do that. All right. I'm going to ask that you try to get that done um, outside of courtroom time. And if there is some sort of an emergency, unexpected reason why something can't have been reviewed before, then you can bring that to my attention. But okay. All right. I would like to find out from kind of everybody. Uh, how many witnesses there are to go and what you expect those witnesses to say. And one reason I say that is because Judge Glanville had entered an order, which I may not have brought downstairs with me, but y'all, when I describe it, will probably be familiar with it, um, that essentially said everybody, not really, but um, several parties have asked for mistrials, I think, because things are moving so slowly. And he entered an order that seemed to say, it appears that the state has 200 and something witnesses. We're on 50 something now. Everybody's causing disruptions or not causing, but there have been a lot of disruptions because um, a witness is on the stand and all of a sudden one party or the other comes up with some video that nobody's ever seen before. Um, and that's the reason for all of this disruption. But at the same time, you know, maybe some of this can be whittled down. And that is a wild paraphrase of that order. But I think you'll know what I'm talking about. What I want to know is where are we really? I mean, I know, you know, witness lists look one way before the trial and who you end up calling oftentimes ends up being something different. I know this is a multi-count indictment. I know that there are a lot of defendants involved in a, several different incidents. Um, but, and I don't expect this right now, but I would like from everybody to the extent the defense knows whether they're going to present a case or not, um, a realistic list of witnesses Maybe like what counts they go to and what you expect those witnesses to say generally, broadly. Um, because this case has been going on for a really long time. And there is a rule that lets me exclude cumulative evidence. And I might end up using that. So how about y'all give me a heads up on all of that, okay? And um, if that is something that y'all could have to me by next Friday for everybody, that would be great. Uh, let's see what's next on my list. Um, with regard to kind of just general scheduling, um, other than the week of the 29th, and then I was told, I think Monday through Thursday of August 19th through 22nd, is anybody aware of time that has already been given to the jury as you're out of court this week? You have this week free. No? Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> does any attorney right now know of a date that nobody from your team can be here? And I wouldn't expect that to be the case because y'all are in trial, but no. I mean, anybody getting married? Okay. Um, so 
I hesitate to even say the next thing I'm going to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, the little bit I have seen about this case, it definitely has appeared that there have been times that tempers have flared a whole lot and that people have been maybe less than professional. Um, and I hope that this kind of breather has given everybody a breather and everybody has been absolutely wonderful here today, but I would like for us to maintain a degree of decorum and dignity and professionalism. That is what is really expected of all of us as members of the bar. Um, I don't want to have to say anything beyond that. Okay. But if, if, if it gets to a point where I think that is not being carried out appropriately, we're going to all have to talk. Okay. All right. Um, all right. What else do y'all will actually go through it in detail so that everybody knows what's going on and we all are on the same page. All right. Um, and y'all for any, evidence that there hasn't been a ruling on yet that I'm going to need to consider the admissibility of. I obviously am going to need a copy of that. So if I've got five hours of some audio to listen to, I don't want to listen to that in court. I want to listen to that beforehand so that I know what we're talking about before we get to court to hash it out. So get me all of that as well. And that'll be more homework for me to do about whether there are any negotiations that might be fruitful, um, whether uh, there is any room for movement by anybody on anything, um, any plea. I mean, I'm, I'm willing to entertain any kind of plea at any time. Um, it can be a joint recommendation. It will be non-negotiated um, since we're in the middle of a trial, um, but it can certainly be a joint recommendation or it can be state wants this, defense wants that. Or it can be, we all want to keep going with this trial. I'm here to do, I am here to give everybody a fair trial and everybody a fair shake, follow the law. Um, but I invite during this pause, uh, if y'all want to think about that and talk about that, now would be a good time to do that. Okay. All right. And are you, you going to file it? You're just giving me a preview or? I can, I can file it. Okay. I can, I'll do whatever the sound court desires. So I just want to bring to the court's attention to be you know, fair to the okay. court. May I approach your honor? Yes. And it may be easiest to just. PST versus Morgan, M-O-R-G-A-N. And it's 288 Georgia, 862, 708 Southeast 2D, 211. And if you look at page two of the copy of the case that I've handed to the Sample Court and the state on the left-hand side, on the bottom last paragraph, our uh, highest court explained that another line of appellate decisions holds that if a party files a motion to recuse a trial judge and the motion is denied, but it is later determined that the judge should have been disqualified to act in the case. All proceedings after the filing of the motion to recuse are invalid and have no effect. And the reason I raise that is, Your Honor, may be aware but may not be. The Honorable Douglas Weinstein filed an initial motion to recuse Judge Glanville. He did that on June 12th of 2024 in the afternoon hours. Judge Glanville initially denied, he stopped proceedings and he denied that motion without referring to another judge, and he made some findings of why he's denying it. On behalf of Mr. Williams, the Honorable, yes. Um, was there a written order? He did file a written order. Uh, June the 14th. Okay. Two days later. All right. And that was the Honorable Douglas Wines. Okay. Um, the Honorable Keith Adams and I, on behalf of Mr. Williams, then filed a motion to recuse, but we didn't file ours until June 17th. It's a Monday, June 17th. Okay. But the way I understand the case law is that once Attorney Weinstein filed that motion, which the Honorable Judge Krause eventually granted. She, okay. Judge Krause, in a written order, dated, I'm going to tell you, July 15, 2024, granted Mr. Williams, as well as Mr. Um, Wein, uh, excuse me, Kendrick. Mr. Weinstein represents Mr. Kendrick, both of the motions. So the way I understand the case law is everything that happened after the filing by Mr. Weinstein on June 12, 2024, is... Um, 
invalid. Okay. Um, so if you would do me a favor and put that in writing and file it as a motion, and then I will add that to our pending list. Yes. And I don't want to, I appreciate you letting me know. I don't want to get into substantive argument about anything today because we don't have the, um, the parties themselves here. This is basically just a sort of status. So if you will, um, file something to that effect, then I'll have that added to the list, but I appreciate that. I'll Thank you. Can I add one other thing just for your knowledge, but sure. if it's um, something that's more than a status, then I will withdraw it. Yeah. I mean, you know, you can tell me, but I'm, you know, not going to consider it. We're not going to argue it, but okay. yes, absolutely. Go ahead. Understood. I just, okay. I'm not sure if I follow what you're saying now. So there was a witness testifying. His name's Mr. Copeland. Yeah. After judge Glanville denied that motion. The okay. jury heard from a witness on the afternoon of July okay. of June 12th, June 13th, June 14th, and then June 17th. So I just want okay. you to be aware. All right. I understand what you're saying now. All right. Thank you. Other than that, um, those are the All right. questions. Great. Okay. Um, hey, so I, I got a question. The lady said, the judge said that she ain't keep up with the trial. She ain't watched nothing, but she hinted at a couple of things. See, this dude over here drowning. I'm joking. He is not drowning. It's back to it. So. What happened in court today? These are all familiarities. She's just addressing all the motions and stuff. She could have if she wanted to, but because they, the damn witnesses and stuff like that were not even involved. I mean, the witnesses, the um, thug and all them weren't even there. She wasn't really going to be doing anything. I ain't going to lie. When she said, and I say 845, I mean 845, we would have been done with this trial probably in about a month. If this judge was here, she seemed like she is stiff for the rules and it is what it is. I'm going to tell y'all now, I'm going to miss that smile and all that happiness she got when we get this trial back started. Because y'all know that's going to disappear real soon. Also, y'all like her now. I don't think y'all going to like her when the time comes. Because if what Glanville has been ruling, and I put a big if, if what Glanville has been ruling as absolute and that nobody that the state has operated as far as the law requires and stuff like that they didn't break any rules y'all gonna be pissed what she did say and i'm glad she said it i'm not about to retroactively go back and start changing stuff that glanville did now nobody gets a grade today except for the judge and i'm gonna give her an a and here's the reason why i honestly thought and they did it anyways and i should have put this in the video that they was just gonna jump on everybody. This is like the new substitute teacher after your teacher just got fired and stuff like that. Here's the class leader. Here's the person that gets all the pencils here, get all the pins and stuff like that, all that crap and everything like that. That's what I thought was gonna happen. But she held her own, bro. Like I told y'all, y'all like her now. I don't think y'all gonna like her when the trial starts. Anybody who was stiff for the rules and stuff like that, y'all not gonna like how Brian Steele's going to present something. We all going to believe Brian Steele is right. And then the court's going to be like, nah. And what I told y'all yesterday is that the state, bro, they, they moving lazy as hell. This right here looks good for Brian Steele and them because she just said, basically, since they've been filing emotions, we ain't really been doing shit. What you mean? Like, all your responses should already be ready. It really shouldn't take until Tuesday for us to get all this stuff done. But I think the judge is being nice. So all next week, we're going to be going through motions. We're going to see. But she said the most important thing, if you caught it. If y'all want to go ahead during these next two weeks and get some plea deals in, we can go ahead and do that. And saying something like that, to me, that sounds like the jurors ain't going nowhere. And that absolutely sounds like we're going to keep on with this trial. Now, I believe if this trial keeps on going the way it's going with this judge, if she is what she is for her rules, and there is a court person who told me this, I'll give a shout out to Miss Sylvia. She said this judge right here is stiff for the rules. So it is what it is. She said she don't play. When she tell you we about to start, we about to start. If y'all got one ju I mean, one lawyer in there, and y'all supposed to have five, we're going to kick it off anyways. So I like that. And I think she's not going to be allowing new evidence like how the damn state has been doing anyways. Just adding stuff in. I think what's done is done, and we're going to get it going. So right now, I think y'all going to like her, and I think the first week y'all going to like her. And then once it comes time to rule on certain things, I don't think y'all really going to be feeling it too much.
But I'm going to miss that smile because once we get back started, it's going to disappear. But let me know y'all thoughts on what y'all thought about today. Wasn't it refreshing? Didn't it seem like there's like a new energy? Didn't it seem like everybody was, well, not everybody, but didn't it seem like the defense was happy to be back? So we'll see what happens, man. She did say that uh, Young Thug in particular, bruh, keep, you got too many clothes here. On top of that, y'all over here playing music and all that stuff. We finna knock that out. So you already see how she struck down Mac and Ass Matthews with what he wanted to do. She like, nah, you gonna meet with your client and do this after hours. Cause you're not about to be doing discovery videos and all that crap in my courtroom. Which means they might miss Glanville. <laughs> we gonna see, man. Subscribe, turn our bell, stay notified, share to keep your people aware. We're gonna get a video on Whitaker. For them all, I'm about to do some deep dive research and I'll tell y'all what I got. But I'm on vacation, but I ain't never on vacation. Y'all know how we do this. We finna cut up, we still finna be dropping videos. There's kids walking in front, so I'm not putting nobody kids in my goddamn video.